Hello everyone, you are with me Runu Yasmin and I have come here with another more interesting session today to discuss. So the topic for today is the normal cycle of erosion that is given by W.M. Davis means William Morris Davis. Okay. So in today's session we will be discussing about that in more detail but before explaining the topic today let me first tell you what is the cycle of erosion. Okay. So the cycle of erosion this word denotes you the process of changing of lands from in a cyclic manner is known as cycle of erosion. Okay, suppose for example, like due to the endosanity process, a land uplifted. So this is my uplifted land due to the weathering, weathering process and the erosion or simply you can say the denudation process, these landmass, afflicted landmass will decrease their height then before and ultimately it will become a feature free plain region and that is known as pediflain according to W.M. Davis. Okay, so this is my afflicted landmass due to the weathering and the erosion process through some state it will become the Periplane, okay, means youth stage, mature stage and old stage. After that it will become feature free plane region and that is known as penny plane. And this feature free plane region, okay, this is the last stage of the cycle of erosion. After that again the landmass will uh, uplift due to the endosynthetic force. Then again this uplifted uh, landmass will come under the weathering and the erosion process of the denudation process again through some sequential stage means youth stage, mature stage, old stage then it will become the penny plane. So this is a cyclic manner and this cycle is known as the cycle of erosion. Well now understand the first word that is the normal cycle of erosion. Why the Davis model of cycle of erosion is known as normal, normal cycle of erosion. So let's have a look the reason behind that. Normal cycle of erosion. Because Davis in his assumption part, he told that the area where the erosion process will take place, there will be the presence of many rivers, it can be consequent rivers, subsequent rivers and many tributaries, means the available of the rainwater will be there, okay, means the river is the medium for the erosion process according to W.M. Davis. And we know river, the presence of river we can find everywhere and 70 to 80 percent of total land, the, the change of the process we can see by the fluvial action or the river action. So the river we can find easily. This is the normal situation, isn't it? The action of the river we can find everywhere except the desert area. That is why the action of river is known as the normal action. And the erosion is known as normal cycle of erosion. Hope it's clear to all of you now. Well, now before explaining the topic today, let me first tell you the assumption. So now have a look at the assumption part that is given by William Morris Davis. Means he, before postulating this theory, he has given some assumption like what type of the area will be there. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So first one is the homogeneous structure. So what does it mean by homogeneous structure? It means that the deep, the style, the inclination of rock beds and the porosity, the water holding capacity, the texture, the structure of that rock beds all are same. That is known as the homogeneous structure. Okay. Next is the rapid uplift landmass. Means the landmass that will uplift it, the upliftment process is very rapid. Means very very quickly. Next is no erosion during the upliftment. So during the upliftment process of the land mass, there will not be the erosion process. Erosion process will take place when the upliftment process will stop. Okay. So the commencement of the erosion after the upliftment ends. Next is the area should be humid tropic. Why the area should be humid tropic? Humid area means 
where the available of the water bodies is there. So the available of the water bodies means they will be producing many consequent, subsequent or any kind of the water bodies and water is the main media for the erosion, isn't it? So according to W. M. Davies, the area where the erosion process will take place should be present in many rivers. Okay, and that is why the W. M. Davies of cycle of erosion is known as the normal cycle of erosion. Next is the crustal stability. Okay, so that is some assumption that is given by the famous geologist W. M. Davies. Okay. Now understand the theory. First understand who is W. M. Davis. So W. M. Davis is American geologist. He has postulated his theory in the year 1899. Okay. So he has given three factors. He told that three factors are the main responsible for the cycle of erosion. They determine so what type of the erosion means the intensity of the erosion process. So what's the factor? There are three factors. So first factor is structure, structure and the next is stage or the time. The third one is the process process because he has given a very famous dialogue that is the landform is the function of structure process and state means these three are the main factors that controls the erosion process but how let's have a look how the structure controls the erosion process so understand what is the structure first structures means the structure of the lithological structure okay lithological structure means the deep direction the inclination of rock beds is folded mountain or the fracture will be found there okay and the texture and the structure okay all are known as the structure of that lithosphere and this structure controls the intensity of the erosion process the next is the stage stage here he told the three stages that is the old stage and the mature stage and the youth youth stage so so the stage means the area uh, is it under the mature stage or youth stage or the old stage these states indicates or controls the uh, erosion process the next is the process process means it can be endogenetic process or exogenetic process volcanic eruption earthquake all are related to it so this process also play a vital role to uh, determine the intensity of the erosion process so these are the three factors that you have to remember okay Really? 
very least. Okay. So the so here you have to remember two two things that the consequent stream that will be occurring in the youth stage will be very short and the number of the consequent stream also very minimum. Okay. But due to the head headward erosion. This consequent stream will increase their length. So this is also a very good characteristic. That is, headward erosion due to the headward erosion. This short consequent stream will increase their length. Okay. The next is river capture. So there will be occurring river capture situation. So first understand what is river capture. Suppose this is a river that is flowing in this direction, and there is also a river that is flowing in this direction. But this river may not follow this direction for long time. It can follow in this direction, and this water will mix here. This water will add here in that area in this river. Okay. So the river will change its its course and it will follow like this. Okay, it means it's capturing the river. So this is the process of the river capture. So this process we can see in the youth stage. The next is the rill and gully erosion. So this consequent stream will start erosion and the gully and the rill erosion is the famous erosion we can see in the youth stage because of the vertical. Erosion. Okay. The next is waterfall and the rapid exist. Obviously, the consequent streams or the tributaries when cross the hard rock or the resistant rock, they will be creating the waterfall and the rapid cascade cataract. The next is the vertical erosion. Yes, this is the newly emerged landmass, and here only vertical erosion we can see. No horizontal erosion or no sideward erosion will be there. Okay, so that are some characteristics feature of the youth stage. Now understand the land form that will be producing in that stage. So V-shaped valley we can see here the gorge or V-shaped uh, valley means gorge. I-shaped valley means the canyon. Waterfall, mid point, touch pool, and pot house are the resultant lands from we can see in the youth stage. So you have to remember all of this. Now understand the next stage that is the mature stage. The next or the second stage that is the mature stage. So first understand the definition of mature stage. And then we will be discussing about the characteristics, feature, and the lands form. Okay. So after the end of the first stage, that is our youth stage. After the ending of youth stage, the horizontal horizontal erosion will take place, and obviously there will also be the vertical erosion, but it is very minimal. Okay, so this is the stage where horizontal erosion we can see very strongly, and this is the second stage. It's known as the mature stage. So let's have a look at the characteristics feature of that stage. First one is the subsequent river. Here we can see the subsequent river. First, understand the subsequent. What is subsequent? This is the regional slope and the uh, uplifted landmass where the consequent river was forming before in the youth stage. Okay, but in the mature stage, there will be originating some river that will mix the consequent river almost at 90 degree angle. This river is known as the subsequent river. Okay, so this subsequent river we can see in the mature stage and then the consequent stream. Obviously, the consequent stream also we can see here and the number of the consequent and the subsequent streams are very maximum in that stage. Okay, means in mature stage. If you compare to the old stage or the youth stage to this stage, then the uh, present of the stream or any river is maximum here. Okay, so maximum Maximum present of streams we can 
can see here. Next is horizontal erosion mode. Obviously, erosion are two type. One is vertical, one is horizontal. Here we can see the horizontal erosion. Uh, and the vertical erosion is very minimum. And the next characteristic is altitude decreases. Obviously, as here we can see the horizontal erosion, that's why altitude obviously will decrease. The next is very extended. Okay, we should very are extended or very broad. We can see here. Next is adjustment of streams with lithology and structure. Okay, this consequent, subsequent, or tributaries they start adjusting their with their lithological structure. Next is the elimination of lakes and waterfalls. Okay, so that are the characteristics of the mature stage. Here, uh, now understand the landform that are being produced in that mature stage. So that are the major we can say because of some deposition process also happens here. And the natural levy graded slope. This is very important that you have to remember that graded slope we can see in the mature stage. Okay, so you should write it. Just don't take it as a movie. Write it down the key point, the whatever I'm writing here, so that you, it will be helping you to understand the concept very clearly. Okay. So now understand the next. Well, now let's have a look at the next and the last stage of the cycle of erosion. That is the old stage. Okay. So what is the definition of old stage? So after the second stage or the mature stage. The horizontal, horizontal or vertical, vertical erosion, erosion totally goes off. Okay, goes off means it stops. Only the deposition, depositional process takes place. This stage is known as the old stage. Okay. Now have a look some characteristics feature in that group that is the main river. Obviously in that stage, the old stage, number of the main river is very few. We can see here very few. But the number of the tributaries are very maximum here. Maximum here. So you have to remember that main river is very few. Tributaries we can find maximum here. Next is the valley. Obviously, in the old stage area, we can see the extended fish valley and it's very large. Next is the featureless plain region. So, uplifted area will come uh, under the denudation process or the erosion process and that's how it will create a featureless plain region in the end of the cycle of erosion means in the old stage. And according to W.M. Davis, this featureless plain region is known as Penny Plain. So, that is Penny Plain. You have to remember this word. Next is Monarno. He told that in the Penny Plain region, there will be some resistance rock will be there. They are not erodible so easily. So, this type of small pillar will be known as Monadonog. Monadonog. And this is named after by Mount Monadonog. So, you have to remember these two landforms we can find in the old stage. Now, understand the resulting landform in the old stage. So, that are the horse-shaped lake, meander and depositional landform. Every depositional landform we can see here especially the monadnock and the peniplane. The most important resulting landform that we can see in the old stage. Okay. So, we have been so far discussing about the normal cycle of erosion that has given by W.M. Davies. So there are so many importance of that theory like uh, uh, it proper, properly explains the, the changing process of the lands from sequentially into three groups that is the old stage into three stage that is the old stage, mature stage and uh, the, uh, old, the young stage. Okay and this is very simple way to learn about the lands from so everybody can understand it that is why it is very famous but yes there are also some limitation of that model of cycle of erosion. So what's there? Let's understand that. So first of all, we know that 
in the assumption part wm davis told that the lithology is homogeneous homogeneous lithology lithology means the lithology or the structure of the rock beds are similar everywhere but it is not possible it is very unrealistic because everywhere we cannot see the same type of the lithological structure isn't it the next he told that the rapid rapid upliftment upliftment of the land mass okay but land mass can uplift due to the plane motion but never rapidly okay so this is also a limitation in that theory the next is he told that during the upliftment the erosion process will not take place it is also unrealistic and again he wanted to explain that the erosion process erosion process and the upliftment of land mass totally different he wanted to show these two aspects separately but that is also unrealistic so that is the criticism of that theory okay so this brings me to the end of the session today hope this is very clear to all of you now no need to worry about the normal cycle of erosion that has given by the wm davis okay so i will be back very soon with another more interesting video till then you take care have a great day and please check the description box here i have shared many link of video of my videos so you can watch it from here okay so spread lots of love it's me ruriya singh signing off for the day